I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell are changes you're going to have a task. Underwater by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, right. we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to have a nice picture. So, which kind of level do you want? So, now I can no longer get to my boogers. It's a tide pool! Wrong! Oh, guess what? We're still in punishment. <laughs> uh, today we're gonna... Today. I, I always do that. Someone needs to punish me for that and it cannot be the cameraman because his punishments are mildly ineffective and rather humorous, which might serve to reinforce all the BS that I tend to say and I'm gonna step in this tide poolish thing. As he's... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know that <laughs> as I'm staring at the water, get about ready to fall into this gigantically deep tide pool in the middle of a place where there is no salt water other than in the aquariums, um, the, the camera <laughs> waves me over to step over it. And of course, I'm like supposed to look at you all, but no, here he is um, making me step over the water. Anyway, so anyway, I think he's trying to punish me for bad jokes, but uh, it's not going to work. I'm going to keep him coming, I promise. So we're going to start out with all the problems of punishment. Uh, because we've been talking about how to make it effective. And... No. Um, see, it worked. He reduced it. She reduced it. Whatever. It reduced its behavior. It's going to get mad at me. I can see that. Anyway. Um... Behavioral contrast. It's yelling over there now. <laughs> so let's just start out with behavioral contrast. It's something that pops up as a side effect with punishment. Right? So behavioral contrast is really simple. Um, I'm going to give just give you a better example here. Um, that example, uh, I mean, not that the crow example is a bad one, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So, uh, so behavioral contrast is when we punish in one, woo. So, <laughs> zip, that's gonna sound really funny. Sorry folks, that's gonna sound really odd. Um, so when we punish in one context, um, the same behavior will pop up with an increased frequency in another context. This is the whack-a-mole game of punishment, right? So whack, I whack it down here and then boom, same behavior pops up over here, but in a different environment. YouTube has done a wonderful job. I mean, a funking awesome job of getting me to stop swearing on uh, when I talk about this content. However, I swear like a blooming sailor at home, like you can't even imagine what it's like. That's behavioral contrast. Okay, so behavioral contrast again, you punish in one context, behavior pops up in another. Let's see, what are some other problems that go on with um, punishment? Oh, competing contingencies, that'll kill you every time, right? So I'm going to reduce this behavior. Da -da 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 -da. I'm, you don't have to punch, right? It's just an example. So um, I'm gonna reduce this particular behavior. I've got it going down. We got a punishment contingency in place. Things are going good. I swear that I'm doing punishment, that the behavior's not going away. Why not? because you probably forgot to find out what's reinforcing the behavior, folks. There's a competing contingency. If a behavior's happening, then it's being reinforced, most likely. There might be situations where that's not the case, uh, but for the most part, you got a behavior that's being maintained by a reinforcer and you're trying to punish it. Now you got this sort of thing going on. Guess which one's gonna win? Reinforcement almost always wins, right? So when you punish behaviors, make sure that you've identified what the reinforcers are and that those reinforcers are no longer enacting, being used or in place, right? So in other words, put the behavior on extinction ha, and punish it. Wow, <laughs> drops really quick. Um, so let's see what else. We got uh, behavioral contrast. Oh, modeling, right? Um, so when I model punishment, all right, uh, or when I engage in punishment behavior, especially with humans, uh, they tend to learn that that's an effective tool, right? Because if my, this is, I'm gonna kind of double up on you here. So if, if my punishing a behavior reduces that behavior. That negatively reinforces me for using the punishment, right? Which then the punished person observes that effectiveness of punishment, and I'm now modeling punishment and getting negatively reinforced for its use. Do you see what's happening here? You create this spiral, right? So of, of, of kind of an interdependency. When I punish, it's gonna work. That's great, so I'm more likely to use the punishers. That's not necessarily great. Um, and then someone else is likely to copy my punishing, which perpetuates all that punishment stuff, and that can be a problem. Right, so we want to get people to focus on reinforcement. So just keep that in mind as you're using punishment, that it can create the spiral of maintaining its use. You can go the other direction and focus on reinforcement. A little bit of punishment, a lot of reinforcement, and then you can start a spiral going that direction, modeling good, appropriate use of reinforcement, encouraging appropriate behavior, and reinforcing it keeps that cycle going. So you can go that direction. Um, let's see, oh, punishing when that's the only, punishing a behavior when that's the only source of reinforcement for someone. 
that's just blatantly unethical. So sometimes the behavior sticks around, you start to punish, you know, for, for various reasons, um, but then you worry about the fact that maybe that is the only source of reinforcement going on in that person's environment. So make sure that when you are punishing a behavior that you're also reinforcing an alternative. Every video on punishment, I'll say that. Every single one. Reinforce an alternative behavior, punish the inappropriate behavior. It's that simple, okay? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Mr. Brad, have I forgotten anything? Not that I can think of. I don't know what else to tell you, folks. Uh, I mean, I, I can tell you more. So, punishment, I'll just kind of wrap it up a little bit. Punishment's an effective tool. It's really, really effective. But you have to watch out for those pitfalls, okay? Um, you have to watch out for these particular problems with the use of punishment. I don't want you to think that this is your go-to tool. It's just another tool in your, in, in your toolbox. All right, see you guys.